Welcome back to another episode of uh, Uber Gear. In uh, this episode, we're going to be working on this 1966 Triumph Spitfire 4 Mark II. What we're going to be doing is actually we're going to be removing the cylinder head here um, because there are several oil leaks that we need to address on this engine. Uh, one of which is basically because the head gasket has failed at the back here of the, of the block. And um, there's an oil gallery that feeds the um, rocker shaft here for the valve gear. And it's, uh, it's actually leaking out between the block right here under pressure, especially when the car warms up. That's one thing we're gonna be addressing. Um, we're also gonna be taking a look at our push rod tubes here, because this is an original um, Triumph uh, 1147. So it uses aluminum push rod tubes that are um, basically pressed in with a swaging tool into the um, cylinder head. So we're gonna take a look at them once we have the cylinder head off. First step though, is that we gotta drain the coolant. Uh, or most of the coolant. We're going to try and get all uh, most of it out of the block radiator um, and then we're going to be removing the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold, the generator, the water pump, and um, whatever else gets in the way really <laughs> of doing this. So yeah, let's get started. Very first step here we're going to be doing is we're going to be disconnecting our battery because uh, we will be working um, on the generator uh, just to remove that so we don't want the positive cable from there arcing to anything or doing whatever so we're just going to go and uh, uh, loosen our uh, negative terminal here and just take this off. Stick him down there. Now that we've de-energized the system, we're going to go ahead and uh, drain out the coolant. Next step, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually open the heater valve. This is uh, this car is actually is factory equipped with the heater. It was an option, um, but uh, what we have to do here is pull this knob. So you have choke heater. This is the fan, but uh, we got to pull this knob out here on the uh, dashboard, and that'll open up our heater valve, and that'll allow us to um, a some coolant will come out, not much, but when uh, a little while later, we're going to actually flush that again because this car did sit for many, many years before it ran. So uh, this is the first time I'm actually changing the coolant from the when we rebuilt it the first time. Um, so uh, we want to just purge everything out of the lines and put all new fresh coolant in it. Um, but yeah, that's that's just what you do to uh, open the heater valve on one of these. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna open this petcock. What I went and um, did is I put some crappy plastic tubing on here just so that this doesn't just come out and spray all over the steering rack, the chassis, the engine, whatever, right? Um, so this is basically going to drain our radiator and part of the cylinder head because the, the level gets will get down to the ev uh, even with the water pump uh, here, so we're going to drain this as much as possible, and then we're going to take the thermostat housing out, and that'll allow us to get more of the coolant out. So uh, remember the petcocks on the British cars, they're left-handed thread. Um, so let's turn this all the way in. It's coming out in a very, very, very crappy stream, but um, it is draining, so that's good. And the coolant looks nice. But we, like I said, we will flush the system out again because um, there is a little bit of rust scale floating around in here, which is to be expected. thermostat housing here um, and what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to loosen up this upper radiator hose. I mean it's a mini little hose but it's just we need to loosen it so we can get it off. Um, so I'm going to I'm just basically going to loosen up these clamps here. Uh, there we go. All right so next up our uh, 
thermostat is held in by just these half inch um, bolts. I actually switched these to stainless steel um, when I rebuilt this before, so you'll notice they don't have the Triumph, you know, standard bolt head in them. All right, so. And these don't need a whole lot of torque, just when you're putting them uh, in. Very little torque on this. Don't he-man them in there. Even though the housing is iron, just they don't need it. It seals fine without it. And you'll notice, one of the things I wanted to just point out is that you have two different size bolts. One is a longer one, one is a shorter one. That's what holds your thermostat in. So we're gonna go bag these just so we don't misplace them and then we'll be back. Okay, so next step is we're gonna just uh, pop our uh, thermostat housing off here. Um, and then we're we might be able to reuse that gasket. It doesn't look too bad. And no. So, okay. Uh, I'm gonna just try and, well, maybe I'm not, but uh, I'm gonna take my thermostat out here. There you go. There we go. Here it is. Okay, now we got that off the radiator. All right, now that's done. Um, we will need to clean this gasket surface off here, but uh, that's good. I think what we're gonna have to do is switch gears and uh, open the, there's another, so there's, when you're draining the coolant out of one of these engine blocks, there's two uh, petcocks to actually let the coolant out. And it looks like um, the level uh, right now is below where we can actually let it out of the water pump and into the radiator and out. So we're gonna have to open, there's one over here um, on the side of the engine block towards the back. Um, it's kind of a little hard to get to, but it's it's back right over here. I'll have to basically loosen that one because it it's broken, but I can just unscrew it and then just let the rest of the coolant out. Um, so we're gonna do that now. As you can see right here is our other block drain um, for the engine. So um, this is a three quarters and this hex fits like on top of this. Now normally if you see that um, brass, it's basically like a dowel sticking out. The idea was that you could actually turn this with that uh, dowel piece sticking out, but this one is just seized solid so we can't open it um, without removing it from the block. So um, what I do is just I get in here with a wrench and I just loosen it you know, enough that I can uh, get in there and, and take it out of here and loosen it. And hopefully my pan's in the right spot. Okay. And there it comes. And as you can see, the coolant has a bit of a rusty color to it, so I'm glad we're, uh, I'm glad we're doing this. As you can see, there's a fiber washer seal on there. It looks okay, but I, I may need to get another one because um, this one's a little crusty. So if you see it here, um, this piece is actually supposed to swivel, but I mean, you can see all the buildup in there and everything. It's just, if you move that, it's never working again. So I wish they reproduced this piece, but I can't find this anywhere. So. Um, if anybody knows where to buy one of these, let me know in the comments. Okay, so the next step we're gonna take here is uh, we're gonna remove our generator just to get it out of the way uh, and to take the fan belt off. Um, but uh, what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna remove our uh, two wires connecting to the um, generator here. Uh, we have field, which is the brown and green wire, and then we have uh, the actual battery power line, which is the brown and yellow wire. So take this one off, take this one off. I'm just gonna set this out of the way. This other wire uh, that goes over here is actually your temperature gauge connection. So we're just gonna sort of pull this guy back and out of the way. 
I'm gonna let it hang right here. Um, so it's just, it's out of the way. We don't, you know, kink the wire or do anything. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna loosen up the two pivots here. So we have this one. These are uh, just a half inch bolt and a half inch nut. We're gonna just loosen her up. Now there's a bracket. I don't know if you can see, but there's a bracket in between the two of these. So uh, what we're gonna try and do is leave that bracket in place uh, and just remove the um, bolts here. So um, this one will have to come out fully. Um, so bear with me a second while I uh, take this off. But I'll, I'll just loosen it for now. Um, the second pivot point is right here. This is again also half inch. Um, and you can just loosen this up. Now if you need to hold it, this locking uh, nut back here should hold this um, piece of stock, this threaded piece of stock in place um, if it's nicely tight. So you won't have any issue taking this out. But this is again another pivot point um, that the alternator, or sorry, generator um, rotates on. Um, so we're gonna loosen that up. And then the final bolt is up here. And this is actually our, you know, tensioner tilt area. So again, they're all half inch. There's no, uh, obviously I have too long of a bolt here. I should get another one that's the right size, but um, you can just uh, take this guy out. Okay, there we go. Now we can, you can see we can move the alternator. Um, so we're just gonna push it in here. I'm just gonna take the belt off real quick. Get this out of the way. All right, now, uh, next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna take this off. Okay, now, we may have to just uh, wriggle this slightly in order to get this out, but uh, we'll deal with that in a second. We'll uh, loosen this one up in the front. All right, that's out. Now I'll come there. Down with him. Now, we just gotta back this one out. There we go. Okay, now, the alternator should just wriggle off. Or, I keep calling it an alternator, it's a damn generator. <laughs> All right, so the next step uh, is we got two lines here we wanna get out of the way. Um, we have our fuel line, and we have our vacuum advance line. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this off. Um, so we have that sort of just, we'll disconnect it. Eh, I'll just do it right now. Over here, pull that off. Take this out of here, set it aside. Okay, that's out of the way. Now for our fuel line. Um, you'll notice a repeating pattern on this car. Everything is half an inch with the exception of some other things which are 9 sixteenths. But um, the same thing with the fuel fitting here. It is a half inch. Um, hopefully we're not going to get a crap load of fuel coming out of here. But there's a pan underneath it, so... There it is. Alright, so now I'm going to disconnect the fuel line from the carburetors. So I'm just going to loosen up this uh, clamp. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, oh, I don't. So here we go, let's take this out. All right, so let's take this off. It's not on there very tight. Let's take it off. There's our line. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, um, well, not the first thing, but next step in the process here is uh, we're gonna start removing hoses. All these coolant hoses have to get taken off. So we've got, um, this is a heater hose, heater hose. This is, uh, the, well, I guess this is send, and then this is receive. 
and then um, this is uh, cool it through the intake manifold to heat it basically but um, we're just gonna undo these clamps take our hoses off you can see these are really these are very nice original clips um, or original style clips I should say um, and I got these from Spitfits Okay, so that's loose, this is loose. Let's get this one loose here. Okay, that's good. All right, I'm not gonna move on to this one. Okay, I'm gonna tighten this guy up, oh, loosen this guy up here. Now we're gonna go this one here. Okay, all right, so why not? Try and get this off. Okay, that one's out of there. Get this guy out of here. Hopefully not too much junk comes out. There's a little junk. That one's gonna come off. All right, there we go. All right, so we've got this, 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 this. Good. Now we're going to go ahead and take off the intake manifold, um, but before we do that, we've got to disconnect our throttle linkage here. So um, this is a 7 uh, little nut on the back here. So I'm um, just going to have to hold this while I turn it off. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're just back in the... Um, the little set screw here that holds our choke cable in, so we've got it loose. You can see it's moving. So now we can just take it out. Um, just slide the cable back out of here. Okay, so that's everything that will get in our way, basically, of taking the intake manifold off. So the next step is to remove the four 9 16 uh, nuts that hold the whole thing on here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So what I usually do with these motors, um, to get to the, the bottom bolts, the two in this inside here, I usually have something like this where there's a universal the socket and then a small extension. So that allows me to kind of come underneath here, sort of sneak in. I can get on there, that would be a miracle. Okay, so that will let me basically just kind of loosen up on this. All right, that's uh, loose. Same deal over here. Just gotta get on it. All right, there we are. So, we just sort of, and again, these aren't, you know, when you uh, put this stuff on, these aren't like nuclear tight. Um, next one is here. They do have a torque spec, which we'll go over when we put it all back together. And this one you can just get with a wrench. It's not a big deal. All right, so we're just gonna loosen her up. And what I'm doing is I'm leaving two bolts in place. You can see it here and here. I'm leaving these two in, because there's six total that hold on the intake and the exhaust. So what I'm doing is I'm taking off the intake bolts. We can just remove the intake, but the exhaust will stay in place. So I'm just gonna and undo these. Now you'll see there's a, a little expander here, like a, I don't know what you want to call that, but it's a, a piece that, uh, it's a load spreader basically. So there's a, a nut, a washer, and then this spreader here. You can see the little bumps. Now, I'm going to support the whole thing as I begin to take these off. And you can see that from the factory, they had nice silicone bronze studs on these. Oh, well, there went the nut. At least it fell in the bin. All right. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is just 
gently. Oh, what's holding it on there? Oh, the gasket. All right, there's our carburetors, intake manifold, linkage, everything in one piece. Just dump the uh, excess coolant out. Uh, the next step in the process here is that we're going to be removing the water pump assembly. So uh, what we're going to try and do is remove all of this in one piece so that we don't have we disturb as few gaskets as possible. I do have a spare for this just in case we have to just something happens. But uh, we're going to take the fan, the everything off in one shot. Uh, but in order to do that, we've got to take the radiator out. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up the clamp for the um, lower radiator hose here from the water pump. Um, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take the uh, radiator out. I would like to note that this is a, this car from 1966 has its original radiator in it. As you can see here, we have this tube, and this is, you know, supplying uh, coolant to the heater core and also to the intake manifold, but it's held in place here by one of the cylinder head bolts, or nuts, I should say. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this one off, and then we'll loosen the water pump. So then we can kind of conjigger the whole thing up and over this and then out. So. Uh, this one, these are 9 sixteenths. They're torqued to 45 foot pounds. So, check that off here. Okay. So that, you know, that makes that loose. And then we're going to work on the water pump. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and remove our uh, water pump housing with the water pump and everything still attached. Um, if you see here, we have three bolts. We got this one that also holds on our alternator bracket. We have this one here, and then there's this one here behind the fan. So there's three of these guys, and there's a gasket obviously between this and the cylinder fit. So what I'm going to do now is we're just going to loosen these up. Um, I'm going to do this one first, I think, just to get this bracket out of the way. Get in here. Okay. Right. I'm going to loosen this up here. Okay. Now we're going to do this one. Uh, if you could hold the water pump while I check the bolts out, that would be very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Hoping. Oh, nope. Okay, we gotta loosen up this nut here. Yep. Oh. All right, now I'm just taking this uh, uh, tube out here because we can't um, we can't get this this piece doesn't fit basically back through the. Can you give me a, give me a favor and yank on that uh, on that tube? tube? Oh, it's just turning it. See? There we go. Here's our water pump assembly. I'll have to clean this up good and replace the gasket, but there you got your fan. Original fan. Yeah, original fan. So what we're doing under here, as you can see, um, the, ex the this the exhaust 
manifold is actually all the way back to there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this clamp to allow that to rotate. Then we're going to loosen this clamp, which also acts as a exhaust hanger uh, that's attached to the transmission. So we're going to uh, just sort of loosen this up so that we can uh, get some play in this. I may have to stick a screwdriver in there just to open it up. But nope, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to loosen this guy up. Do it. Okay, back up to the top. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and remove the exhaust manifold here. Um, previously, you saw us loosen it up on the bottom um, for the exhaust. Uh, we may end up actually taking that mount off, but we'll see. Um, but uh, this is a very tricky thing to get in here. Um, when we put this engine back in, uh, the first time we had the exhaust manifold on it because there's basically, I mean, there's no clearance um, with the studs in place. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here. But uh, we're going to basically remove these two bolts and then we're going to try and just sort of tip her over this way as much as we can so that it's not in the way of us removing the cylinder head. So, here we go. All right, we're going to take this one off. This is, again, 916. Um, there are no spreaders on this, there's just a washer, as you can see. Um, okay, get this one off there. And you can see it's basically just, it's ready to go. Um, yeah, I guess so. That should work, right? Yeah. That looks good. Uh, next step in the process will be to remove the valve cover here. Um, these are half inch. All right, here we go. These are not the factory nuts. They're actually from an aluminum uh, valve cover that came with the car, but uh, I like this one better because it's gold. <laughs> Plus it seals better. Okay, this is just gone. So what I want to do now is I want to set um, the engine to top dead center of cylinder one um, so that our timing is relatively where it needs to be to start adjusting the valves. Um, so I'm going to take this spark plug out. I'm going to look down the hole, which I'm going to need a flashlight for. All right, so I'm about to turn the engine over here where well, you can watch the valve gear move. Um, it's important to note that on an 1147, or I think the 1296, but I'm not sure, the crank uh, nut size is one and seven sixteenths. The um, 1500 I know is a much larger size uh, uh, bolt. Um, it's, it's quite a bit bigger, but uh, this one is one and seven sixteenths. So I'm gonna watch the piston here. That should be, yep, there's see our mark. You can see our yellow mark right there. Our piston's at the top, and our two valves are, we didn't have to go too far, but our two valves are, you know, you can see both intake and exhaust, they're not actuated at all. Right, they're totally loose. You can see that most of the other valves as well, with the exception of this one and this one, are don't have any engagement right so this is the best ideal scenario to take our rocker shaft off so um, that's our next step basically is to remove our rocker shaft so now we're going to remove our rocker shaft um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to loosen them up just a little bit at a time so this is 9 16 so we're taking them off here
so now we can just basically lift the rocker shaft up off of this. There might be some stiction here on the push rods, but I can basically just take her off. So uh, we rejoined our action here at, uh, we're gonna be removing our push rods and labeling them all as we go. Um, so uh, we, these are just flat tappets, so they're, um, you can see the sort of rounded end there. They're not like a, a hydraulic tappet or anything like that from an American car where the, the oil passes through the center of it. It's just a, you know, solid lifter. Um, but these look like they're in pretty good shape. distributor cap and wires off so we're just sort of out of the way we have a little bit more room um, the one thing on this distributor is this this lead wire but it's nice and flexible so we can just get it out of the way um, so yeah we're gonna do that now all right so we're just gonna disconnect our uh, spark plug wires here okay and uh, just pop this off pop this off Take this guy out of here. Take the coil wire off too. Put him away somewhere. Interesting note, this is actually a Delco distributor. So uh, <laughs> maybe somebody with a four cylinder uh, American car recognizes the same distributor, but it's a GM product. All right, so. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to loosen up all the cylinder head uh, nuts that holds the cylinder head on. Um, we're going to reverse the factory torque sequence. Sequence. So this is one, this is uh, eleven. So we're going to go in the reverse of what it is uh, when you actually tighten it down. Um, these are nine sixteenths nuts. They're three eighths twenty four. If you want to order them to replace them um, on the. Newer engines, the 1300 and the, four, and the 1500s, they only use 10 studs, but on these 1147s, they use 11. So, here we go. Last one. That was not tight. <laughs> not compared with the other ones. Just gonna give this a couple of taps and see if it comes loose. It's coming. We gotta get the back half of this. All right, I think it's loose. All right, there she comes. It's heavy. Surprisingly heavy for such a small engine. Close. There it is. All right, so that's our cylinder head off. It looks like we gotta do some cleaning around some of these uh, uh, coolant passages because that one, that one's definitely solid. So, uh, <laughs> looks like there's some a little bit of debris in the block too, so I'm gonna clean these out. Um, then we're gonna clean up the combustion chambers. Look how small the pistons are. That's great. <laughs> uh, we're about to just uh, take our head gasket off of here. Um, I would love to know 
I think somebody's had this engine open before, but I would love to know if this is like a factory style gasket or not. Because um, it is a copper, it is a copper gasket. And it says Stanport on it, so it is a factory gasket. Made in England. Unbelievable. I kind of wonder if this is, it's an original engine, I don't know. I'd love to know. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just sort of trying to get some of the junk out of the holes here. There's a lot of um, buildup, shall we say, in the coolant passages, probably from it's sitting for a while. I mean, or the fact that it's 50 plus years old. Um, there's just a lot of junk in here. It's open, it goes down here, I can feel it. But what's probably gonna have to happen is we're gonna have to fill this up probably for a little bit drain it out. If you look down in here in the cooling passages, it's just coated with junk. Rusty coolant. Hey, look at this guy. So. All right, so we've got a nice big chunk here. Crap that we're taking out of this hole. Just pick the chunks up. All right, so right now we're just kind of scraping the junk out of the cylinder head here. Um, try to get some of this, you know, just open the holes basically because we have a couple here like this one I mean it's just there's a lot of junk in here we gotta get this stuff out it's pretty nasty hopefully this doesn't plug a radiator but we're gonna really flush this thing once we uh, put the cylinder head back on like I said because we're just going to clean up the cylinder head uh, gasket mating surface. Um, we're also going to clean the tops of the pistons, just get this carbon off of there. Um, so, kind of got to go between the head studs here. So now, uh, one of our one of the big issues uh, why we took the cylinder head off, besides the uh, rear uh, head oil leak, is that if you look here on these uh, Triumph 1147cc uh, engines, they have the eight pushrod tubes are not cast into the cylinder head. They're not part of the casting. They're actually an aluminum tube that was inserted into the uh, head here and then swaged on either side with a tool to seal it. So what's happened to us is that the aluminum, you know, it gets from obviously from expansion and contraction over the years, uh, has started leaking. So, I mean, I don't know if you can see like the shiny, you know, a couple places here where there's oil, but what's happening is if you look at the cylinder head here, the oil is getting by this lip in certain places. 
because it's no longer sealed. So in order to seal it, we're gonna use these swaging tools here. Now I wanna thank my uncle because he uh, was able to get these made for us from a diagram from the actual uh, um, engine service manual. Um, and he had these made for us, so thanks a lot. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know what we'd do. Um, but anyway, these guys actually work like this. So we're gonna have one in the bottom of the tube, that'll swage the, the bottom of the hole, the, uh, the, the bottom of the uh, cylinder head hole, and then this one is on the top, and this one you strike with a hammer on the top here. So you can see it, it'll be eh, roughly like this inside the pushrod tube, and you hit, hit this side here. Now what we did was, we cut a couple of pieces of wood and a stack here to be the exact, um, height we needed so that we get a few millimeters out of uh, this when we strike it so that it uh, will just cinch up the tube but not give us enough that will hopefully not do any damage to the aluminum so we'll see what happens we're gonna try it on this one first this is this one right here is by far the worst offender um, and you can kind of see it a lot of these other ones are a lot more tight this one is like, you can feel the lip around it. It's just, it's not pressed in there nicely. Maybe that was from the factory. Maybe, I don't know what happened, but like, it, this is the worst one by far. So I think this is gonna be our test one here um, to see how well we do with the tool. So the good thing is though, that the, the machining on this is like perfect. So it drops into the hole with like absolutely no play. So, we'll get that, you know, there's no chance, you can see there's no wobble at all. So there's no chance that like, I mean, we have to hit it like square on, but we're gonna be good. Um, so we're gonna set up our wood under the cylinder head and, and just get the uh, two swaging tools in place and then we'll uh, be back. Okay, so if you can see what we've got going on here, we have our wood holding up the cylinder head. And if you'll notice, we have just, it's just enough. Um, and then here's our lower swaging tool. And then our top upper one goes in here, like that. And then what we're gonna do is hit it with a hammer and that should, you know, it mushroom out basically the top of this um, tube, the top and bottom of this tube so that it seal cinches it up nicely. So let's try it. Nice. Look at that. There you go. That probably needs a little bit more. Uh, so we're going to move on to our next one. Uh, as you can see, we've got it set up here got our block of wood in place. So we're just gonna give this a couple of whacks. So uh, now uh, we need to clean the bottom side of this, clean the gasket surface off. I also need to clean this surface off. Now we're just going to clean up the uh, cylinder head, uh, the gasket mating surface here on the cylinder head. We're also going to clean all the carbon out of the uh, 
out of the combustion chambers. Or at least attempt to. Alright, so that'll do it for part one. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode where we uh, reassemble our, the engine. We'll put the cylinder head back on. We'll uh, set up our valves. And uh, once we get everything tightened down and uh, all the gaskets good, we'll um, basically fire it up and uh, see if it runs. And hopefully not have any leaks. But it was, uh, it was really cool to see that we have uh, an original copper head gasket from that engine. So, anyway, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.